Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We read in the Heidelberg Catechism, the 55th question. What do you understand by the communion of saints? Answer, that believers, one and all, as members of this community, share in Christ and in all his treasures and gifts. Second, that each member should consider it a duty to use these gifts readily and joyfully for the service and enrichment of the other members. And we read in the book of Romans, chapter 12, beginning in the fifth verse, so in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each of us belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace that is given to each of us. If your gift is prophesy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, well then give encouragement. And if it's giving, well then give generously. If it is to lead, well do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. According to the Apostles' Creed, the church is the communion of saints. In the original Greek and Latin of the Apostles' Creed, the word we translate as holy and the word we translate as saints is the same word. So the phrases in the creed could be translated either as the communion of the holy ones or the communion of the holy things. We are the holy ones. But what about those holy things? Well, when the Holy Spirit is present, whatever it touches becomes holy. For example, the bread and juice on the communion table are very ordinary things. But if the Holy Spirit is present, they become holy. Our building would be a very nice assembly hall and community center. But if the Holy Spirit is present, well, it becomes a holy place. The sermons I preach, they're just words. But if the Holy Spirit is present, they become the word of God. Congregational singing, well, that's just singing. But if the Holy Spirit is present, it becomes a joyful noise to the Lord. The Holy Spirit also provides the church with holy people. We know this because people in the church are gifted by the Holy Spirit. We've been blessed by the gifts of the apostles who have passed their gifts on to us in the pages of Scripture. We have been blessed by gifts of, the pro of prophets who can see the world from God's perspective. We've been blessed by gifts of teachers who can explain God's word to us in ways that we can understand. We've been blessed by gifts of, of miracle workers and healers that have sustained the church for, for 2,000 years. And we've been blessed by church administrators who keep all of this running. We've been blessed by people who help others. What this means is that we are a church of holy people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for assembling so many holy people into your holy church. Bless us with your spirit so that everything we do and everything we say and everything we think 
is holy. And we acknowledge that your name is the holiest of all. Amen.